We're, we're in Burrawang, which is one of our depots, and Burrawang is a site where we have about uh, 12 offices from time to time working in the office, and, uh, and it's a site where we uh, have a major pump station to transfer water from Fitzroy Falls to Winter Caribbean Reservoir. We have an existing aerated wastewater treatment system on this site, and I think it's fair to say it's been performing suboptimally. And so um, we decided that this is an area where we would try and upgrade it, but because we've got quite strong constraints, we've got uh, drainage uh, lines close by, we've got stormwater management, we've got the canal, an open canal, we've got a helicopter pad, and we're in a fairly high rainfall area, we had to find a sort of a wastewater system that would be suitable for the limited area and all these other constraints that we've got. And uh, we went to a consultant, and the design that he recommended was uh, a sand mound, or often known as a Wisconsin sand mound. It's an effluent disposal and a treatment system. It provides treatment within the mound, it's secondary treatment within the mound, and then that effluent gets disposed of into the subsoil. The key thing about uh, Wisconsin sand mounds is that they're a very effective way of treating effluents and then disposing it over a small footprint. Certainly a key component of ensuring an effective construction of the on-site effluent treatment system is to make sure that the installers have a good appreciation of the design that you've come up with uh, as a consultant because you've taken into account, into account the site and soil constraints um, that are obviously fairly crucial in determining the most appropriate solution. So to ensure that the best job is achieved and put onto the ground, then uh, certainly good communication channels um, and ensuring a good understanding uh, between the consultant and the, the uh, installers, it's crucial, it's absolutely crucial. Key points in the construction of a sand mound are uh, appropriate preparation of the ground. And there we need to lay out the, um, the footprint of the mound carefully uh, according to the size that's been uh, determined. So in that particular case, it's important to survey or peg out the, the base of the mound and especially the alignment of the mound in relation to the contour. The mound needs to run along the contour. In other words, the top of the mound needs to be horizontal. Other things that are very, very important with the mound preparing the ground, we need to incorporate some of the sand material from the mound into the soil in the shallow subsurface so that we get a nice gradational change from the sand through into the soil. We've got to be careful too that we place the sand without compacting the ground too much or without compacting the sand unduly. So laying that in nice layers or lifts as we call them so that we've got nice uniform hydraulic characteristics in the sand, very, very important. This uh, is the sand that's been selected for the construction of this particular mound. And this sand is from uh, Penrose Quarry. It's a quarry which is relatively nearby. And it has a sand which meets the required specification. Now the specification of sand is determined by a number of sieve tests. We sieve the sand and we check uh, what particle size distribution it has. And by drawing up a histogram or a cumulative frequency curve, two ways of displaying those data, uh, we're able to then determine two characteristics of sand, the effective size and the uniformity coefficient. And provided those sands meet a suitable specification, that the sand will effectively allow the water to drain sufficiently slowly for treatment to take place, then that sand is appropriate for use for a sand mound. What you're going to look for here is contamination. You know, if the sand is not clean, you get your bits of twigs and vegetation, you get your grass, you get your bits of timber, bits of old rubbish from the quarry, you know, if it's not a very well-run quarry or anything. And you really don't want too much of that in your sand. Your sand needs to be a clean sand. Uh, once we have achieved the uh, design, height and form of the man, we then level that off so we can place the gravel bed uh, horizontally. We usually do that by placing some timber shuttering around the uh, outline of the, uh, the gravel bed or the manifold uh, so that that can be incorporated in a, a nice boxed sort of shape. 
Other important features are the placing of the manifold. The manifold itself has got to be laid out horizontally and it's important to level that uh, to make sure that we get nice even hydraulic uh, distribution. Uh, once that's completed, uh, we then put more gravel on top of the manifold to cover it and then a geotextile over the top of that. We withdraw the timbers that are used to surround that gravel and then a little bit more sand, some good quality uh, soil and then turf over the top of the mound and that protects the mound from erosion and degradation on the one hand, also of course provides the vegetation which helps to take up the moisture by evaporation and transpiration and of course that vegetation will also take up some of the nutrients too. And key facets of the mound are that they are well exposed to wind, that they're not in the shade so we get good evaporation and transpiration and of course we get good growth of vegetation throughout the life of the operation of the mound. We've got to dose the um, effluent to the mound, so we have a pump chamber, timer, which will trigger the dose, and the dose will be pumped through the manifold, and we will dose that effluent at anything between four doses a day and maybe up to 20 doses a day. And that figure is chosen commonly based on the type of sand we have. This is a refinement. Um, if we've got a sand which is a little bit finer, we need to dose little and often, so more frequently, maybe up to 20 times a day. If you've got a slightly coarser sand, still within the specification, you can dose less frequently, maybe down to four times a day. Well, I think, I think the key advice is, first of all, don't be afraid of a sand mound. It, it's something that is uh, one of the opportunities for wastewater disposal and you shouldn't sort of bypass them because you're not familiar with them. It's a treatment system, it's a disposal system, it's treatment above the mound and it's quite a high level of treatment. Thank you.